Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video today. Doing a video style that I don't usually do. Uh, I had the full face cam up. You can see I haven't shaved. Uh, I look like a... I don't know. I look like a homeless teenager. I promise you I do have a home. Even though it is scrappy. You can see the terrible lazy poster set up on the wall behind me. Uh, but that's not the focal point of today's video. We're going to talk about Kyler Murray winning the Heisman Trophy. This was not a huge shock. He was my prediction for the Heisman. A lot of people thought it was going to be Tua Tagovailoa out of Alabama. Some lunatics even thought that it was going to be Dwayne Haskins out of Ohio State. We're going to do a little bit of talking about why uh, Dwayne Haskins was unrealistic and why Tua, despite having a fantastic year with the best team in college football, the Alabama Crimson Tide, I don't think that's specifically like incredibly debatable. The Crimson Tide were incredible. And Tua was a gigantic reason why. And up until this past week, during the SEC Championship, the Big 12 Championship, even the Big 10 Championship, we're talking about Dwayne Haskins. Tua had it, in my opinion. And then Kyler Murray turned the tide. So, of course, it was kind of split for the end there between Tua and Kyler Murray. Tua won both the Walter Camp Award, which is, I believe, best player. Yeah, best player. Uh, and also the Maxwell award which is the um the player of the year so it was kind of split kyler murray also won a few awards himself they split uh either what is this two nights ago yeah kyler won the davy o'brien award for the top quarterback in college football and he also won the ap player of the year so associated press of course you guys are familiar with the ap top 25 uh and it was super close again for me it was the deciding factor with the SEC Championship last week. Tua got injured early in the game, somewhat early, and he got off to kind of a rocky start as well. I'm going to pull up his stats from that SEC Championship game just to kind of put it into perspective. If it was a super close matchup between him and Kyler Murray, how Kyler kind of pulled ahead to win the Heisman eventually. So Tua had a really tough, uh, tough start to the SEC Championship game against Georgia. It was really close at the beginning. And I think part of that is the Alabama offense never really got a chance to get going. I believe they were down at one point. Um, it was either 21 or 28-14 in the third quarter. And Alabama, of course, mounted that comeback with Jalen Hurts as their quarterback. Tua, 10 for 25, 164 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions on that game. One of them, I remember, was particularly bad. He threw into double coverage in the end zone, and it just... It wasn't particularly good. You could see some separation at some point in the route. Uh, it was kind of a post down the left side of the field, if I recall, going towards the near post. Um, so it was an interesting route. And even though it got a little bit of separation, based on where the safety was playing and where the cornerback was, there was no real window to throw the ball. And Tua just kind of guided it in there anyway. It wasn't really particularly on the money, and it was easily intercepted. Uh, it just wasn't a particularly good decision, and he didn't play like the best player in the country in that game. And it was so close for me at that point that when Kyler came out against my favorite school, the Texas Longhorns, he came out 25 for 34 through the air, 379 and three touchdowns, including about 40 yards rushing. Even though he was subdued on the ground a little bit with his legs, I mean, he just beat Texas so soundly through the air, and Texas' secondary is not what it used to be certainly not dbu anymore chris boyd is a disaster caden stearns was out for the game i understand these things he got injured but kyler murray just continued to put up big numbers and i know it is the big 12 i understand that but oklahoma was a team that just went through everybody this year i know they lost to texas texas was on a huge roll at that point uh, and it was a super close game in which they mounted a gigantic comeback huge in part to kyler murray now that was a ranked Texas team, right? That was a very close game, and those teams would eventually meet in the Big 12 championship. The reason why I'm kind of dismissing Dwayne Haskins is even though he came up big time in the Michigan game, even though he was dominant in the Big 10 championship, he was inconsistent a little bit throughout the year, and they lost to Purdue. 
They got rocked by Purdue. It wasn't particularly close. And if you're going to be a Heisman winner, going up against Tua, who dominated the entire year, against top defenses in the SEC, LSU is a big example of them, against Kyler Murray, who dominated again, and I get it is the Big 12, but he was an absolute menace on the ground as well as through the air. So even though it is the Big 12, I mean... He just put up such incredible numbers overall against some top defenses as well. I know, Big 12, but Texas has a solid defense, and they just went right through him. And there are some really good defenses in the Big 10. Michigan, for example, with Dwayne Haskins. But Dwayne Haskins, again, disappeared into big games at the start of the year. Maryland is a great example. Again, Purdue. I don't think you can face some of these teams and perform the way that he did and still expect to win the Heisman when you're going up against historically incredible years from Kyler Murray and Tua Tagovailoa. And I know what people are going to say. You bring up the Maryland game. Well, that's a game that Ohio State 100% should have lost, and they didn't. They didn't lose it. They should have lost it. It came down to a two-point conversion, if I remember correctly, and they screwed up so badly Ohio State won the game. There was a wide open receiver in the end zone uh, for Maryland, and it just it just didn't work out. Dwayne Haskins was good in that game. 405 yards, three touchdowns, and only a pick versus a Maryland team. Granted, this is Maryland. I understand they beat Texas at the start of the year, uh, so you can throw that shot at me, but this is the Maryland Terrapins. This is a team that was 5-6 and six at that point. So you should be going off against a team like this. You should be. And again... And you'll also come back. Well, Bengal, didn't Dwayne Haskins put up incredible numbers against Purdue? Yeah, 470 is incredible. Two touchdowns and an interception. But you scored 20 points. 14 of those essentially came in garbage time in the fourth quarter. And those were his two touchdowns that he threw. So, I don't understand how you can come out. And sure, you're putting up incredible yards. Well, you have some of the best receivers in the country as far as speed. Paris Campbell is an excellent example of that. An excellent example. He's one of the fastest players in the entire scene of college football, draft eligible or not. Yet, you still can't manage to get in the end zone. You can't manage to beat this team. And at the end of the day, say what you want about yards. Say what you want about touchdowns and beating top defenses. You have to win some of these games and you have to do so in a convincing manner. And Ohio State didn't do that the entire year. I know the game against Michigan. I know. But when you're in games against TCU that proved to be a phony team, when you're in games versus Penn State, who I, I know was ranked pretty highly at, at you know certain times during the year, this Penn State team was as bad as we've seen them over the past five or ten years. This Penn State team, despite being ranked highly, was not that good. They just weren't. Ohio State scored 27 on them. You're in games against Nebraska. Nebraska started out the year 0-6, I believe. 0-6. And, and you're in a game with Nebraska. You win by five. It, you just can't do that. You beat Maryland by one in a fluke victory. It just... There aren't convincing wins. And despite Dwayne Haskins putting up good yardage numbers, they just, they just didn't show it to me over the course of the year for Ohio State being a team. A lot of that can be put on the defense. I understand. I understand people aren't going to like my argument, but I'm telling you, this is why guys like Tua and Kyler deserved it more. Sure, Tua had a better defense to back him up, and it made some of these wins look convincing. A lot of that... Tua was incredible. Kyler, it played with the Big 12 Oklahoma defense. He came out, shootout, every single week, balled out, insane numbers. For me, it just put him over the top. And I know, say what you will, Dwayne Haskins deserved it, maybe, you could say. He was the clear number three. Tua lost it in the SEC Championship against Georgia coming up short. And Tua, for me, despite probably being a better quarterback in every way over Kyler Murray, it's college football. It's not about that. That's not what the Heisman is every year. It's not the most pro-ready quarterback who wins the Heisman. It is the best overall player in the nation, and I'm a Texas Longhorn fan. I hate Oklahoma with a passion. Kyler Murray was without doubt the best player in college football. That's my opinion. You guys can go at me in the comment section for it. I'm sure you will. Um, but that's how I feel. Again, sure, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Let me know what you think of this style of video, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. We'll